Central Valley, California is a primarily agriculture-based um, area of the, of the state. It's not a heavy palm tree area. The population can range to be about a million people, a million and a half, depending on the seasons. Um, agriculture community being that it is, they rely heavily on an immigrant population coming up from Mexico, oftentimes illegally, to manage the, the ranches and the farms and, and everything that goes on, including the vineyards. Oftentimes the illegal immigrants, they bring up the small dogs and the big dogs from Mexico with them. The dogs come up unfixed, unvaccinated, and running wild. So oftentimes you get dogs that are producing at rapid rates. When the agriculture season is done and harvesting is all over, and they head back to Mexico, they will leave the dogs on the ranch lands and in the farmyards and so these farmers now have to to deal with these animals and oftentimes they get brought to shelters and um, or left to fend for themselves. One of the reasons for the high number of stray dogs in California is the economy in California being the way it is. A lot of people will leave their homes and they'll leave the dogs in the backyard locked up in the house uh, until rescues get called to come and save these dogs. A lot of the times they'll escape the yards and if they're unfixed they'll populate more and more and the problem just never goes away. And the third more common reason um, as to why there's an overpopulation issue is Fresno specifically is considered the meth capital of North America um, and oftentimes these dogs are bred solely for the purpose of selling the puppies very cheap to support their meth labs. Um, these dogs will very often be left in their cages, not able to uh, socialize or interact, um, except when it comes time to breeding. Oftentimes those dogs that are selected are the dog of the hour, so if it's a Chihuahua or a Dachshund or any of those breeds, those are more often what you'll find being used in the meth labs. We get asked quite regularly, why are we bringing up only the smalls? There is a significant overpopulation in Central Valley of not just the littles, but also the big breeds. Our answer to that is simply, you, it's very difficult to find a small breed dog in shelters in Canada. Um, and with so many families moving towards smaller homes, smaller townhomes, condos, apartments, it's very difficult to maintain a large breed dog. Um, getting enough exercise or care, maintenance, things like that. Uh, the small dogs are also a dime a dozen in Central Valley and it's just it's a good effort to work alongside of people who are, are dog focused to get them out of there. Probably one of the biggest problems is it, that and not enough people get their animals spayed and neutered, so there's an awful lot of puppies being born. Um, they end up as strays on the street. Then they end up in the shelters where there's just not enough families to take care of all of the, the hundreds of thousands of dogs that are just here in the Central Valley alone. Um, one shelter um, has over 200 dogs and there's 10 shelters that have probably at least that many. enough families here in the area that can allow them to be in get their own loving homes. <laughs> Stats as we have uh, found in the Fresno and County area down in Central California um, basically shows that between 60 and 85,000 dogs are euthanized every single year. To reciprocate that and bring that up into Canada statistics, uh, Canada only euthanizes between 6 and 8,000 dogs every single year. 
um, and most of those are generally larger breeds. Um, you can't find small breeds up here, whereas the California rate, um, the Fresno rate, that is uh, largely comprised of small breeds. So it is really, it is quite an eye opener to hear, you know, those stats. And when we first heard about that, um, that's what sort of made us jump into to wanting to help. Different shelters have the different euthanasia rate. Kings County, for example, they, even though they currently are housing over 200 dogs, they, um, last year, they cut their euthanasia rate down to 36%. Prior to that, it was probably up in the 80s, uh, 80%. I don't remember the stats right off the top of my head, but we're talking close to um, 30,000 dogs that went through that shelter in a year. And to reduce it from at one point an 80% euthanasia rate to last year being only 36% is enormous. Legally, a shelter has to hold on to an animal for a minimum of 72 hours. One, after a 72 hour period, the dog or cat um, technically becomes property of that shelter and they have the legal right to do what they feel is necessary for the dog, be it release it to um, a no-kill shelter rescue, um, put it up for adoption, or to euthanize it. But after 72 hours, they become legal property of the shelters. Our process starts with uh, the selection of a dog. Uh, it goes with uh, Cheryl in California, our volunteer. She visits the shelter. She picks out dogs that would be best for kind of based on temperament, if they're friendly. Normally, if they're too scared, they probably wouldn't do good on the plane. Uh, any progress would just be relapse. From there, Cheryl will bring them to her house to get them used to the home environment. Uh, within the span of that and come to Canada. She takes them for vet visits, spay, neuter, microchip, heartworm tests, vaccinations, which cover the whole range. Um, she tries her best to crate train the dogs, uh, house train to the best she can. At any given time, she could have 10 dogs in her house to 20 and uh, her setup is just amazing. The dogs feel well loved before they come here. One of the extra steps that Cali Can takes is assuring the health of these dogs. Um, they get out of the shelter well in advance of flying up to Canada so they can be spayed or neutered and be fully recovered from that surgery prior to flying up there. Every one of these dogs are within days of getting out of the shelters are current on vaccines. They're uh, dewormed for any internal parasites. They're heartworm tested to make sure that they um, are negative for heartworms. Um, they're given flea and tick um, prevention to assure that everything that possibly could be done to assure the health of these dogs prior to ever leaving California is, is taken care of. And any dog that is suspected of not being in perfect health when it leaves, um, may delay a flight. It may not make that particular flight. Might go up on a future flight after it's um, maybe needed a little more time before it was ready to go. We've had a few dogs that um, required surgery. They've been here four to six months before they feel or feel they're ready to leave. Every step is taken to assure the health of these dogs prior to leaving California. 
the day of, Cheryl drives from Hanford, California to Los Angeles. It's a four hour drive. Cheryl also has a cargo van which she converted to what she calls as the rescue limo. Uh, she's installed separate air conditioning into the back of the van with temperature gauges to make sure the dogs are comfortable. She doesn't only transport for Cali can dogs, she also helps a lot of other rescues in the Central Valley. From there, the dogs pre-flight get to uh, stretch their legs, area for them to do their business and um, then they get loaded up to make their way to the Los Angeles airport and all the way to home in Edmonton. And at the max, if say I go by myself, uh, six dogs can go in the cargo hold. We put two dogs per crate and then one, the smallest little dog fits in the carrier at my feet. So the max, when I go by myself, it's seven dogs. The interest in Caligan is definitely skyrocketed. We started the organization with the intention of it being a hobby, um, of doing maybe three or four flights a year. Uh, the first year we managed to succeed that, we did 15 dogs. The second year though, our popularity just exploded um, and we ended up doing 78 dogs that year. Last year we did 104? something that to that effect you get so many you start to forget um, and um, we now do flights every between four to six weeks um, and we do have waiting lists we do have people that you know we've done applications with them on past dogs that you know they just weren't the best fit but they would be great for another dog so they are currently waiting to to find their match and as long as we feel that they would be a great fit for a dog um, you know, we'll definitely keep them on our waiting list until we can we can find that, that perfect match. Calican's a huge solution. Um, maybe not in numbers because they concentrate more on quality versus quantity. Most of the rescue community that knows Calican and be that the no-kill shelters local here or the, the shelter environment um, they think the world of Cali can um, I've never heard a bad thing said about them they're they're thrilled that Cali can is stepping up and asking or wanting these um, dogs that we just have such an abundance of um, even though we've taken up over 200 dogs already, um, we're not taking up mass numbers of dogs at one time where we can um, we can get to know the animals a little bit. They go into loving homes very quickly. Um, we kind of trickle in instead of um, rush in with a bunch of dogs. Um, the 
but it's it's just huge how they're um, able to take these these dogs that we have just thousands of here in the valley to up to a place where the community cherishes these dogs. They're um, they're waiting for them when they're at you know arrive at the airport, and it's um, it's huge. We you know some of these little dogs that they touch our hearts and um, to they just love that that Callie can wants them and they cherish them and the community up in, in Edmonton um, cherishes these dogs and everybody gets so excited when they know their dogs are going to Cali Can where they know they're going to find a loving home. I've had a few people approach me with dogs that they've asked for help with that they don't want the dogs to go anywhere but to Cali Can because they know Cali Can takes the extra step to assure these families are the right match for that dog. It's not every dog's perfect for every home. Every home needs a special type of dog and every dog needs a special family. And Cali Can takes the time to find that perfect match and to assure that everybody's happy and that the family doesn't regret adding this family member and that the dog lives the rest of its life in the perfect environment, completely cherished by that family. The amount of support and dedication that we've received from everybody over the last three years that we've been running, we have found that there is a desire for the services that we're offering, whether it be bringing in the dogs from Central Valley or accepting the local surrenders and working alongside with a lot of the rescues um, to just help get these dogs adopted. Calican's vision for the future involves a shelter that is designed to support these dogs until that moment that their family finds them. In order to achieve that, we're going to have to work towards getting sponsorships uh, from local businesses or international businesses as we do work with you know, the California people. We're also looking in the short term for volunteers to help us run at special events. Every summer we run a Cali Can barbecue that allows our rescue dogs and their families and other supporters and their dogs, of course, to come by and visit to help out at adoption events. Um, as we start to expand and become busier, we'll be also looking for volunteers to help in vetting families for fostering or for permanent homes. We want to really take Cali Can to a step where we're community driven in both Canada and in California. We want to work towards education on responsible pet ownership and how that's going to save a lot of these um, unwanted dogs.
they have no idea how many tears I shed. <laughs>